Okay, hi, so welcome to the third video where we're speaking about wave properties. And in this one, we're going to have a look at diffraction. Now, where reflection and refraction were a discernible change in direction, so we could say, specifically, we've got an angle of incidence and an angle of reflection or refraction. In diffraction, what we're talking about is a spreading out of waves. And this is as they pass through a gap, pass, or move round an obstacle. Move round an obstacle. Now, first off, to make the explanation easier, rather than looking at a ray of a wave, we're going to have a look at wave fronts. Wave fronts. Now, I haven't used these up until now because I do think that they get confusing and we don't need them in order to explain uh, reflection and refraction, even though they are in your books. Now, a wave front, the easiest way to think about it is just a point on a wave, okay? For example, if you have a wave that looks like this and then we have another one, let's say that this is water, okay? Now, if I said that this point is where I'm going to uh, classify the wave front, that means that this point is the next wave front, okay? Because it's the same part of the wave, repeated. And so on and so on and so on. Now, if we looked from above and we looked down at a water tank, let's say we had a tank of water that looks like this. Probably should have drawn it a different color, but oh well. Now, if there are waves going in this direction, okay, the top of the wave here, which I've said is the wave front, we can just show that as a line. Because if we were looking horizontally, it would look like this, and we would see this here. But vertically, you see just a line because it's part of a wave and it's uh, visible to the eye. And then next, you see the next wave, which is here. And these are what we call the wave fronts. Okay, this is how we draw them. So these are the wave fronts. Okay, you'll see why that's important in a second. Okay, so I am going to draw the tank in a different color this time to make it clearer. So what we have here is a tank of water, okay? And this orange line here is just a vibrating beam. So that's a beam, and the reason that's vibrating is so that we can produce waves in the tank of water. Pretty simple. Okay, so we have waves coming in. And I'm just showing the wave fronts like so. But these are barriers. So we've put these barriers in place, okay? What's going to happen is that, well, the water waves, as you can tell, they go all the way across the tank. Right? I've been lazy here, but they go all the way across the tank. But now there's this barrier and it's going to uh, create a disturbance. What is going to happen is diffraction. And when I said spreading out, that is best seen by the wave front. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm drawing the wave fronts. So we are then going to have the next wave front will look something like that. And then the next one will look something like that. And so on. Now, you've probably seen this when you've seen ripples in a pond or whatever, and that is because you have created a barrier, you've caused a disturbance, and the waves will move accordingly. Okay, now your level of diffraction depends on the, um, the gap, so how far apart the barriers are. So, what if the barriers looked like this? Now there's a very small gap for these waves to get through. What we're going to see is greater diffraction. So they're going to change shape more drastically. You can see that these are more of sort of a steep uh, semicircle than previously. And so on and so on, like so. And so we get increased diffraction. Now, this only works to a point, because if we made these barriers extremely close together, so there's a tiny gap, then diffraction will almost stop. So there is a point where diffraction um, sort of is at its highest. So in general, though, the narrow gap equals more spread. More spread 
or you could also say greater diffraction. Okay, and when you've got a really wide gap, you have less diffraction. Now it turns out that the greatest level of diffraction, so the greatest diffraction, is at the point where the gap, so let's say that this gap is equal to the wavelength of the wave. Okay, so when gap equals wavelength, and if you remember, sometimes we denote wavelength as lambda. Okay, so when the gap is equal to the wavelength, that is when you get the greatest diffraction. Now, this all might seem a bit abstract to you, but when is this actually sort of relevant? Well, one example is when you have really hilly areas like this and you have houses. So let's say, for example, you live down here in this beautifully drawn house. Well, radio signal and telephone signal, that's all transmitted by waves. So radio waves and those radio waves, let's say they're coming in and these are the wave fronts. This is an obstacle. And so the waves are going to diffract around that obstacle. And look, if your house is in the valley, so it's right under the hill, well, this might cause these waves not to really be um, picked up by your antennae or your mobile phone or whatever when you are down there. And so this equals poor signal. Poor signal. Whereas... If there was no hill there whatsoever, then this wouldn't happen and you would get these waves. These wave fronts would all be going down here. And look, they go down, blah, blah, blah. This is an awful drawing, but here we go. Look, your house is being completely covered by these waves, so you can pick up the signal and happy days. Okay, there are various other examples of diffraction in action. Um, light, for example, in a telescope, that uses reflection but also uses diffraction. Um, there are various other examples. You can read up on those in your own time. But obviously, this video is just to give you an idea of how it works and an example of where that's happening in real life. So I hope you've learned something from that. If you do have any questions, though, please do feel free to send me a direct email using the link below or comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.